Okay, this is uh, like my lecture number two. And um, we continue our progress. Let me call it relentless uh, progress along the geodesic path of uh, maybe our geodesic path, I don't know, but uh, to uh, the definition of metanol polynomials. And as I mentioned last time, the reference is Duo Ram Archive. I've forgotten the number. Let me look it up. Uh, it's, uh, April 2020. Uh, there is also, uh, the, maybe there are more of them, I don't know, but there is uh, definitely two of them with a supplement and we are using the one which is not the supplement um, and we are doing section five. Um, okay, so let me recall what we did last time. Uh, last time we defined the double affine origin group um, dot. Um, so let me, this was done by generators and relations. So we had some S naught T1 through Tn minus 1. S not check, G, G check, and Q. Um, and here are the relations. Let me write down the relations um, with the convention uh, of the usual Dinkin diagram convention. Okay. This diagram stands for a bunch of commuting relations and some braid relations. Uh, and similarly, we let me give them give them some numbers. One one prime. S not check. P one. T n minus one. Then. There is a conjugation by G, which will take S naught to T1 and Tn minus 1, like so. And there is two prime conjugation by G check, which will do the same thing here. So I, let me not write that down. Um, so three. Okay. The space here, I can write here. Three Q is central, and four. Let me call them four point one and four point two. T one G check G is G G check T n minus one inverse. So T n minus one. Sorry, not check inverse. Uh, and 4.2 is Tn minus 1 inverse through T1 inverse, G, G check inverse is equal to Q, G check inverse G, Tn Tn minus one. So 
this is for part two. So this finishes the definition. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Raghavan, can I ask a question? Yeah. So uh, when, when I, I, this is just a convention question. I, when one says that Q is central, is that the same as saying Q is a scalar? No. Uh, Q commutes with all the elements. Yeah, so. All the generators. Then why can't I think of Q as just some scalar parameters? Um, I mean, just a, uh, uh, well, you can say right now it's only a group, so eventually you'll be specializing. Oh, this is actual scale. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You uh, once you make it into an algebra, perhaps you can think of it as a scalar parameter, but you could also specialize it to, I guess, anything any operator that commutes with all these operators, That's right. for example. Okay. Okay, right now it's only a group. So uh -huh. this just means that Q commutes with all the generators and therefore it's in the center of. Uh -huh. So this is short for Q S naught is equal to S naught Q, Q T1 is equal to T1 Q, etc. All those relations. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. And we had also seen that there are two important involutions. Involutions. Uh, one of them is called I in the paper. Uh, the other one is called eta. This is also called uh, the check duality. And this is denoted like this, this duality. This is because uh, as you, as you I'll recall right now, this refers to the reversal of uh, uh, that is, you make T1 into Tn minus 1 and Tn minus 1 into 1. And this check is because we go from here to this side, to go from here. Okay, so very quickly. So this was check duality. What does it do? It switches G to G check. Okay, and for reasons that are uh, 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 given by this 4.1 and 4.2, I need to, I cannot send S0 to S0 check, but S0 check inverse. Okay, and then TI to TI inverse and Q to Q inverse as well. Q to Q inverse as well. Uh, uh, TI inverse is same as TI. No, it is not. But pictorial representation from the pictorial representation, it is looks like TI inverse is same as TI. We give pictorial representation of no, TI no, 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 no. From the pic, okay. Let me recall. Uh, no, for TI was let's recall the pictorial representation. Um, for example, here you start with one, two, three, etc., and i, i minus one. So this is i minus one and i. Uh, so let me see. Uh, uh, so this is t. Okay. So remember, this goes down. So here is. Let me change. So this thing here shows, see, this shows that Ti is not equal to Ti inverse. Ti inverse would in this place be, uh, this goes above and this goes below. Have I made this clear? Okay, sir. I just thought that it is a permutation I I plus one. Uh, no, so the, uh, sorry, uh, this is true. This is true. Mm, what's that? T, ti plus one, ti is equal to ti plus one, ti, ti plus one. That's true. This is the braid relation. That is true. You can uh, prove that using this, but uh, you know, these, these pictures, when you compose them, uh, satisfy this. These relations, but 
uh, there is an up and down. See, that's what makes it uh, the braid group, an element of the braid group rather than of the underlying toxicity. group. It, it might help to draw the picture of Ti squared because then you really yeah. see that it's not the identity. Yeah, okay, let me do that also. Thank you, yeah. So let's draw the picture of Ti squared. Okay, I'm trying to uh, Ti square. So let's see, uh, let's draw just T, this is T one square. Okay, and I'm taking N equal to three. Okay. So I connect like this. So you see this, uh, the, these two strings are uh, tangled, uh, if I may use that word. See, this goes above and comes below. So you cannot separate them. This is not equal to this. This is the identity. Okay. The underlying permutation is the same. It sends one to one, two to two, and three to three. But the, the strings, uh, there is some not trivial topology here. Thank you. Okay? Yes, thank you. Welcome. Okay, and where were we? Uh, I was talking about the eta duality. Questions are welcome. Any, any questions, uh, don't hesitate, yeah? Um, Ti and Tn minus i are switched. So that means, for example, uh, it, you can see that G has to be switched with G inverse. G check has to be checked with G check inverse. Not that it has to be. Surely G cannot go to, you know, it has, you know, G inverse makes sense because. Uh, for example, let me say this here, S0 goes to T1. So when I make this, this becomes Tn minus one. Uh, or, or let's look, look, look at T1 goes to T2, right? But then here, the T2 goes to Tn uh, minus one, T, so Tn minus two, uh, T1 goes to Tn minus one, right? And then this is conjugation by G. This has to be conjugation by G inverse, okay? So, sorry, what am I saying? Uh, this way, this way. This way is conjugation by G inverse. Okay, anyway, we saw this last time and it's fairly easy. S0, S0 check and Q are fixed. So much for the, I have just recalled the definition so far that we did last time and also reminded you of the two dualities which are very important. Now, uh, sorry, um, and all, um, let me go to the next page here. Okay. And let me uh, tell you alternative presentation. Actually, there are two of them. I will recall only one of them. So these are in terms of elements x1 through xn, t1 through tn minus 1, s0, g, and q. Okay, and what are the relations? Uh, one, uh, which was s0, t1, and so on. This is there. Two, which is CG going around like this. That is there. Three, which is Q central 
the set. Okay. Now I'll call these five because four I've already used and four uh, there are no fours here. So xi plus one is equal to ti xi ti for i between one and n. The xi's commute among themselves. And in fact, they form a subgroup uh, isomorphic to Z power N. And Xi Tj is equal to Tj Xi for, uh, let's say, J between a one and N. And I will do this current J not equal to I minus one I if I have that correct. Um, and six G XI G inverse is equal to XI plus one for one between I and N. And G X N um, G inverse is equal to Q inverse x Right. Okay. So we had done this. Now, okay. So let us start with new stuff today. The double affine Hecke algebra. It is the group algebra of the dart for the notation work for which was this modulo uh, these relations these relations that are t i minus t power half into t i plus t power minus half equal to zero. So uh, Apurva already asked me, so this is for i between one and n minus one. Um, Apurva already asked about uh, coefficient ring. So let me again not commit here. Let me just say that if you wish coefficient ring, take it to be z t plus minus half. Okay, that is good enough for the moment. So we've seen the Hecke algebra, uh, right? And uh, so, so this uh, this should sound familiar. So let us let me write out um, the other forms of writing this equation. So uh, here is one form. The other other way to do it, if for example you can write it as ti square is equal to. Okay, and then if I send it to the other side, it becomes t power half minus t power minus half ti plus one. That is one way of writing it. Another way of, it also shows that ti is um, invertible. So for example, using this, uh, I can keep one on this side, take it, take it, take this to the other side and factor out a ti and see that ti inverse is equal to ti minus t half minus t minus half. Okay. And I can, yet another way of writing this is you can send this to the other side and this to the side and write ti minus ti inverse is equal to t half minus t minus Okay. Now, uh, a very easy exercise. Um, is that this uh, I and eta extend to uh, aha. So the notation. Let me introduce notation. Yeah. 
h tilde i n to h tilde i n, except that for i, so if you recall, what do we do in eta? Uh, I'm just solving the exercise for you. So what does eta do? Eta just permutes, uh, it's some permutation of the ti's, right? t1 goes to tm minus 1, t2 goes to tm minus 2, etc. But this relation is the same. So, so in fact, uh, this is easy. One thing you observe here is that ti doesn't go to itself in, for i, it goes to its inverse. So uh, there would be a slight issue here. So uh, what you will need to do here is t half goes to t minus half for this one. So it's some kind of a conjugate linear, if you wish. Uh, OK. OK, I'll pause here and ask uh, if you have any questions. So we have defined now one of the main uh, actors in this uh, uh, in this story. Um, this is where everything happens the, within the graph. Sorry, I had a quick question. Not question, really, remark. So sure. you're saying that I, it, so I extends from uh, the dart to its group algebra, including this extra this extra conjugation. Right. And eta, eta extends without this conjugation to the group algebra yeah. and both of those factor to the double affine algebra. Yes, right. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Now let's worry about, so, um, Next question is, how do uh, Ti and G pass through X mu? Of course, this is all in H and T. So this is the question. This is what we want to understand. Okay. So what do I mean by, so let, let's recall. So mu is in z power n, that's our convention. And then what does x power mu mean? This means x1 to the mu1. So this is definition, xn to the mu1. Okay, so uh, where these were the generators of, uh, uh, of the, in the second, presentation of the dart, these were generators. If you want to take the original um, presentation, then there is an expression for x i. So x1, for example, is g check t n minus 1 inverse. So this was definition. Um, and then x i plus 1 was t i xi so this defines the xi just to recall for you okay so what do we want to do is i we want to keep so the question now let me clarify the question so what we want to understand is i want to understand ti x mu is equal to i want to write something and then ti on this side i want to pass the uh, uh, you know, I want to see what, you know, I should, I, I'll probably get something in terms of the excess here. I want to determine that. And maybe there will be some other term as well. So this is, this is what I mean uh, by this question. So what happens if I, I, what I want to do is I want to write ti x mu, and then I want to write ti on this side, on the right side. So this is the question. And similarly for g. Okay. So uh, let us let us do the one for G. That's easy. So let us un, uh, try to see what happens. So so G x one G inverse. If you just recall, I wrote this I think some time back. Is x uh, i is x i plus one for i between one and n n minus one, and then a G x n uh, n G inverse is q inverse x1. 
okay we have this so it is easy to work out what happens when g passes through this so let's quickly do that g x mu so i'm doing the calculation is equal to let's write this as g x mu g inverse g right and i will try to simplify this and g has come to the right side okay. now uh, so here x mu is x1 mu1 etc so let me write one more step x mu x1 mu1 xn mu n g inverse g okay now g x1 g inverse is x2 right so you can write it out as a uh, long you know there is a conjugation on each one of these elements by g right x1 becomes x2 so i'll get x2 to the mu1 right x2 becomes x3 so i'll get x3 to the mu2 and so on xn minus 1 sorry xn to the mu n minus 1 right and then this becomes x1 to the mu n but with a coefficient in front okay so this is what um, so let me write it out the conclusion is g x mu is equal to q minus n x2 to the mu1 x3 to the mu2 xn to the mu n minus 1 x1 mu n g so in a sense what it does is there is a permutation that is active on the you can think of a, the effect of g going to x mu is that there is a factor of q power minus n in front and mu n. sorry mu n thank you q power mu, minus mu n in front and then there is this uh, uh, permutation that's acting on these uh, acting on the x mu now, okay, let's do for um, ti x mu, right? What is this equal to? Okay, this is our question. Okay. Now, this is a this is a little bit. This calculation is a little involved. So let us let us try to understand it in some simple cases. So let's do ti x j when j is not uh, uh, let's say i or let me get this right i minus one or i plus one, i plus one. yeah then this is equal to x j t i so no problem there at all so this case is done so i only need to worry about t i x i and ti xi plus one. Okay, so let's write it down. These are the only two cases I need to write about. And what, what, so here I can do the following. I can write ti xi is ti uh, uh, let me see. Uh, no, let me let me write a ti ti inverse right so that gives me this is xi plus one okay and what is ti inverse that was ti minus t half minus t minus half okay so i get xi plus one ti minus t half minus t minus half x minus one. So, so when I pass the x, ti through the xi, it passes, but making that xi into an xi plus one, 
but there is also a lower order transfer. Right? It, it just like so. Let's try this. This is PI. Um, uh, xi uh, plus one. So let me write ti. Uh, is that how I want to write it? Uh, ti inverse xi ti inverse. I can write that. Right. Because x i plus one is t i, so where do I have that? Here, I have this. So from there, I can get this. Okay. So that's x i t i inverse. But I think not not with inverses, right? right? Um, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Uh, Did you want t i x i uh, minus one instead? Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm. Thank you. So let me see how I want to write no, this. I think you can go ahead, but just without the inverses there. T I T I X I. Okay, T -I. but I'm worried about uh, T I T I being on this side being. Uh, yeah, you have to compute it out. Yeah. It's a heck relation, right? So ti square is a heck Yeah, ti square is there, but uh, ti remains on this side. So I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. Uh, it will yeah. work. <laughs> It'll work. Okay, go let's go. Let's go. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, let's do that. Ti, ti. Okay. This ti square, I write it as ti. Ah, okay. I see. Thanks, Arun. I see how it works. Right, so I substitute. Sorry, that's sorry, that's wrong. That's ti square was what is equal to t uh, power half minus t minus half into ti plus one. If I got that right, then xi ti. Okay, okay, now. This is ti t power half minus t power minus half ti xi ti, which is xi plus one, plus um, just the xi. Okay. So, so this is also, let's write it out uh, like this. So it's xi ti. So ti passes through the xi plus one, but produces an xi on this side. And then there is a t power half minus t power minus half xi plus one. Notice that this is just the negative of this. Okay. Now, uh, now there is a little bit of calculation, and this will come out to be. So this calculation I am not doing. So what is involved in this calculation is, uh, see, these uh, you do this by induction. So you, you can break this mu up into smaller pieces, say mu one and mu two, right? And then ti of x, and then if you assume it, how this formula works for ti x mu one and ti x mu two, then you can work it out for ti x mu one x mu. Okay, so this is an easy calculation and I'll put it in the exercises. So what we get is si, x mu ti okay to si x mu means si acting on x mu so uh, it will switch i xi and xi plus one okay so see for example here that's what is happening here so if this is si of xi this is si of xi xi plus one and similarly here si of xi plus one is xi okay so that's what that is plus Okay, t power half minus t power minus half by one minus xi, xi plus one inverse, one minus x si into x2. 
Okay. So, of course, you will complain uh, asking what this thing is. What, uh, let me change. Uh, so, this is, this is our formula. And what, what is this thing in the denominator, right? If you want, it is just something short uh, for um, an expression that works. For example, if I put x mu is equal to xi, this expression works out to this thing here and, and so on. So this is, uh, in other words, this one minus xi acting on x mu will be divisible by this one minus xi, xi plus one inverse, and you will get some expression here. And this is shorthand for that, okay? Perhaps that can be interpreted in, uh, uh, in maybe some other, uh, uh, make a, you can, you may be able to make a construction and interpret it in there, but, for now, let us just take that as short. Okay, so um, maybe maybe the the scalar should be outside the fraction, and the other one should be on the numerator. The scalar should be outside. Uh, I mean, this is the way it is written in the notes. It doesn't uh, matter really. Yeah, yeah, of course, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, and it's probably more, uh, you know. Uh, Arun can correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, these, you know, these are formal objects, and it may be better to write it than write them in particular ways. Uh, and this is the way it is written. So I'm just following the notes there. Okay. Any questions? Uh, so we have the daha. Uh, so. The next step for us is to go towards what is called the polynomial representation of the Daha. So, so far we have defined the dart, which is which we did last time, and gave uh, uh, different representations for it. And just now we have defined the Daha which is just the group algebra modulo uh, the, the hete relations. Ti square is equal to something into Ti plus one. Uh, those relations or T minus half, T minus T power half, sorry, Ti minus T power half into Ti plus T power half is equal to zero. Those relations. So, uh, it is an algebra and next thing we are going to do is talk about a polynomial representation or the polynomial representation. Okay, so uh, so the, the polynomial the polynomial representation of the Daha, the notation for which was this. Okay. So now fix Q and T power half in C. I'm, uh, Arun, uh, I'm a little confused in the notes. You only say T, but I guess you mean T power half. It should be t power half. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So uh, I, I and also this. Right. I put a half here also. Okay. So these are certain uh, parameters that you choose, and such that they never. This this power or this product never equals one. Right? Q to the a times t to the half to the power b never equals one for whatever value, whichever value of a and b you choose in set. 
Okay. At the moment, I still don't see where this is going to be used. We will definitely not come across it today, but it will, I'm sure, uh, appear somewhere. So we put this. So I denote by one. This is uh, uh, is the module. It is isomorphic to C. Okay, so here I am uh, tensoring the daha with C. That is uh, that is uh, understood. I, uh, previously, I had Z, and I joined T power uh, half and its inverse. But now I am just tensoring with C. Okay, over the subalgebra of the Daha generated by T power, oh sorry, T1, Tn minus 1, and G. Uh, so each Ti acts as T power half, G acts as identity. Okay. So um, what we are saying is, look at the subalgebra generated by these T1 through Tn minus 1 and G of the Raha. Now, for that subalgebra, there is a one dimensional module um, which, with Ti acting as t power half and g acts as one. Of course, uh, this needs some justification. For example, uh, we have a relation such as Ti, um, Ti plus one, Ti is equal to Ti plus one. Ti, Ti plus one, but this is all right because uh, each one of them acts like T power one half. So here I get T to the three halves, and here I get T to the three halves. So there is some checking to do here, right? And so also G, Ti, G inverse was Ti plus one. Okay, so. Um, There is something to be done here, but uh, this is easy to check, easily check. Now, the polynomial representation of the Gaha of a center is the following. Um, by definition, it is So over this subalgebra that I have defined here, I'll not give it a symbol because we will never see it used again. Yes. Okay. And this is isomorphic to uh, C as a module. This is X1 Okay. So let me just give a heuristic reason why this is isomorphic here. Sorry, quick question, Raga. Yeah. When you say plus minus, do you mean plus minus one? Like is it Laura yeah. or is it two n variables? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so the justification for this is our previous, um, um, what we saw previously. So we had, um, recall that our algebra is generated by x1 through xn, uh, t1 through pn minus one, g and q, right? And so q is of course a scalar, uh, is a central element if we pass through and we know how it acts on this. Uh, it's just acts as q. Yes. And then, um, we have seen that g uh, x mu, you can pass the g through the x mu. So, um, so we had something like g x mu is equal to 
something in terms of so SI X mu. Uh, Sorry, actually. G. So, so this, we still haven't specialized Q, no? Q. Yeah, I have it exactly. Upstairs, do you want the subalgebra uh, to also contain Q upstairs? Okay, so maybe I'll write here uh, generated by Q right, and Q access Q. <laughs> Sorry for the Q access. Here the Q is a generator. Here the Q is a Oh, sorry, we have fixed already Q. Okay. We have fixed. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I need it to be precise, more precise. Thanks, Venkatesh. By the way, does this polynomial representation have a name? Because I'm sure that we will see many times. Uh, uh, sorry, have a it's name or a symbol or whatever. Ah, uh, okay. I was going to uh, the book, uh, the paper doesn't use a symbol. I will short. It uses just this polynomial algebra symbol. Okay. Uh, uh, but I, since there is the Laura, I would prefer to use this. So I will use this. Thank you. Okay. So the reason why this is, I'm not giving a proof, but heuristically why this is, is uh, uh, because of the, our previous proposition. The TIs pass through the X mu and you will get some uh, some x mu here, so maybe x, if it was xi, for example, you got xi plus one, etc. Some x mu, and then ti's go to the uh, right side. There may be also a term with, not involving the ti with only an x mu, but then you know how to write it, and so on. So, uh, so this this object here, which we will be um, interested in, is isomorphic as a c module. To this, uh, uh, to this lot of polynomial. Sorry, one more question. So, sure. in the g x mu equals s i x mu g. Uh, the s i part takes care of that q raised to minus mu n as well. Oh, there was sorry, 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 sorry. Because here q is not a root of unity. So, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I forgot. That. Sorry. Thanks, Anthony. Any other questions? I mean, really, it's a cyclic transposition. It's a cyclic rotation, not an SI. It's a cycle, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Um, so I, I, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, thanks. Um, thanks. Thanks. So, so let me write it again. Sorry. G x mu, what we saw was x uh, q power minus u n, uh, x, uh, x2, x1 becomes an x2, x3 becomes, x2 becomes an x3, and so on. So x n to the mu n minus 1, and then x1, x n um, becomes an x1. So it's, So I hope I got it right now. Uh, I got that seems between the. Yeah. So this is what. It is. And similarly for the ti, you had you had this uh, this expression here, and I I I got I was writing I was trying to write this that, that is not for g that's for ti. Okay. Okay, so uh, proposition. Um, G acts as, so a G, so, so let me preface this by, as operators on this polynomial representation we have. And G as an um, operator is S1, Sn minus 1. Okay, there is a bit of notation here. I'll explain this. So this is an operator. So what this operator does, okay, so Tn minus one comma xn uh, so 
funny. Did I get the notation? Uh, just one second. I am worried about whether I got the notation correctly. Sorry, I had one other question as well. Sure, sure. The first line on this page, in, in what setting is this equation two, are you saying? Um, first line on... Is the G supposed to be one on the right-hand side or something? I mean, I don't understand. There is no G in the polynomial representation. No, as operator. It's an operator. Oh, these are operators on the on the space. Okay. Yeah, as operators. So it's it's an equation of op uh, of operators. Okay. Thank you. Right. Just uh, just one second. I'll, uh, not uh, this is not. Sorry. This is Q inverse. So, and I have to tell you what this Q inverse X is. So, what it does is uh, very simple. It takes X. This, so, this is an operator. So, uh, uh, both sides of this equation are, 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 are to be thought of as operators on this. So, I'm saying G is equivalent to the following to the composition of these operators. So, this operator is being defined. So that it is just uh, each of the xi's are eigenvectors for this operator. It is the eigenvalue of the xi is one, and for xn it is two inverse. That's all. Okay, this is an operator, and s one through s n minus one act on these xi's by permutation. Okay, so this is the uh, this is how g acts. Okay, and what is involved in this proof? is no uh, you know it's uh, again i will spell it out in the exercises but really um, not much more than what is going on here right in this i hope you are able to see my cursor we worked this out so okay. sorry uh, can i ask a question sure sure i'm horribly confused you have written on the previous page that G acts as one, and now you are saying G acts in this complicated way. Uh, yeah. See, G acts as one on this module. Uh huh. So G acts as one on this on the generator here. Uh -huh. But so, for example, for example, what are elements here? Right, and typical element would be x mu tensor one. Okay. And then um, how does G act? You would have to G X mu tensor one. And then what you would do is write this G X mu as like so Q minus mu n uh -huh. okay. X two mu one X three mu two and so on. Whatever that is. and then pass the G through, right? There is a G, but that G goes here uh -huh. because that is in the subalgebra. Okay. And this G acts as one, so I can forget this. Okay, so all the action is on this left-hand side and... Uh, right, so this is, this is, this, uh, this stands for, remember, this stands for uh, this tensor product. Huh. And so, a typical element here looks like what uh, by by writing this i'm claiming that every element so c uh, so h so what ah uh, yeah this has basis has c basis x mu tensor one mu is in z this is clear z to the n mm -hmm. okay. so by the way, Raghavan, yeah then should the first line maybe you want to use mu instead upstairs? This, I mean, this mu is different from that. The mu in the first line on the same page, on the same page, second page. Oh, here I I want to use mu. Is that correct? I mean, I meant the you could change the first line, keep that mu the same because you have to make many changes. But upstairs in the very first line, you probably want to call it x to the mu. Here. Yeah, because then both sides will act on a monomial x to the mu, right? That's what you want to say. 
that's why that g remains on the right hand side is because you want to these are supposed to be operators acting on this algebra so they will act on x to the new right they In will the, act on x to the new okay i'm not quite understanding what you're saying but we want me to change this to a new i can yes please i'm as i'm saying the left hand side here is not g acting on x to the new it is g x to the new acting on c of x plus minus uh rather this g x new this equation this equation is not an action at all this is in x and theta that's right yeah and okay. both will act on x to the new x to the new tensor 1 Yes. Uh, just to avoid the confusion between the mu upstairs and the mu downstairs, I think. Yeah. So thanks, Arvin, for the question because I think uh, many other people would have had same question. So, so yeah. G acts trivially on this right-hand uh, side, and T I is just put a factor of square root of T. Yeah, square root of T. Yes, but again, uh, the T I's on the whole C uh, thing will act a little more complicatedly, and I, I'm going to just write that down. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, sure. So let me try to see if uh, insert page. Um, if I can, the problem. Okay. Let me do here. Here. I'm trying to get this. Ah. Okay. I finally managed. so um okay so i will write out i am continuing the proposition here so this was this was explanation to arvin's question so kind of so i am saying ti as an operator on the um ti as an operator on c x the polynomial representation equals equals t power minus half t e x i minus x i plus 1 by x i minus x i plus 1 into 1 minus s so let us try to think of this as an operator so one si is the operator which switches xi and xi plus 1 right one is the identity operator so this makes sense and then this is again a short hand so when i divide this by xi by xi plus 1 if i act it on something it will get divided these are so uh, uh, maybe to make more sense of it xi acts by multiplying by x so xi is an element of this uh, law of polynomial ring and xi acts by multiplication by xi so by that i mean if you think of it as an operator here this this operator is uh, multiplication by x okay. okay so again let's uh, let's so that i think it's arvin's uh, question was maybe in a very important one so what do we mean by this so if i want to have ti acting on x this and an element here a typical uh, basis element here will be of this form right maybe i can write it like that and then what you will do is you will try to write this you will write this ti x mu tensor 1 okay. now you think of this as an element so so uh you know think remember this is in h tensor sub algebra 1 okay so when i when we write this this is in this is in h n tilde okay so you use the previous um whatever we had okay so let me write that out once again um what was that 
uh, Tix mu was Si x mu Ti plus t power one half minus t power minus one half by one minus xi xi plus one inverse one minus x si right so it will uh, so you can sort of see where this is coming from and this this ti will act like so this ti you can pass to the side okay there is no need to pass anything here so this this is uh, some x mu and that will i mean some some element of uh, this itself right so this will stay on this side okay tensor one but this one this ti you can pass to the other side and i'll get a t to the one half and then it's a small matter of writing this out, which will give you this. I had planned to do this, but in the interest of time, I will, uh, since I'm running out of time, I will leave that also as an exercise. Okay, let me finish by saying the following. Um, Venkatesh, I'll take two more minutes. Yes, sure, no problem. Okay. So the non symmetric methanol polynomials. Now we are ready to define them. Um, at least write down a formula for them. E mu. So, so some comments. These are simultaneous eigenvectors in uh, for the action of y1 to y. Okay, recall that, see there are these yi's also in HN tilde, uh, in BN uh, tilde, but then also therefore, therefore yi also, you can think of them as here. So they are, and this, uh, this, this is a module for HN tilde. Therefore, it makes sense to talk about yi as operators on on our polynomial representation. And what we are saying is that they are uh, simultaneous eigenvectors for this. So uh, Arun will correct me if I'm wrong here. These YIs are semi-simple operators on, on this. Is that correct, uh, Arun? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, um, and... And commute as well, pairwise? Yeah, because uh, they come. Yeah, they that is that is true even here, right? Y yeah. I Y one through Y n. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the subgroup generated by that is Z power n. I just wanted right. to say it because you said the word simultaneous. That's right. Ah, thank you, thank you, um, thank you, Apurva. That's uh, relevant. Yes, they commute and they are semi-simple. Uh, thank you, Apurva. Um, so, so they uh, they are simultaneous. Like Okay, so uh, I'll the because the intertwiners, this we haven't defined, but we will do next time. Tau one check, tau n minus one check, and tau pi check move past y1, yn in the best possible way. So I'm using the language of the paper. Sorry, and the mu here are all mu in z to the n? Or? Uh, they are 
I guess, but we will do it only for mu bigger than or equal to. So mu is in Z and this is this will be our. We will define E mu for these. Okay, but I suppose you can do for others as well. You can do for all of them. Yeah, we can do for yeah. Um, they are the perfect tool. Or constructing so in other words we will need to define these uh, operators on on our uh, polynomial representation and then so let me finish by writing the formula it may not make much sense right now but t to the minus one half l to the L V mu inverse tau check U mu one. So um, this is the formula for the McDonald polynomial, at least in the case mu is in Z and this one. Now uh, what, uh, there are, so these u mu's, v mu's, and tau e mu checks. These we need to do. Okay, and this v mu will be an element of the symmetric group, SN, and therefore this length here is the length of that. So it's some integer. So uh, it is t minus half to that integer times this operator acting on one and that will give us a Laurent polynomial and that will be our definition of it. okay uh, I'm out of time so I should stop here. thank you Any more questions, comments? Uh, if I want to uh, do this for SLN, what should I, uh, what changes do I make? I'll let Arun take the question. It's sufficient to take the product of the x1 up to xn, x1, x2 up to xn equal to one. Uh, and the g also is there still? The g is still there, yeah. When you take the product x1 up to xn equal to one, then that forces the g to have order n. But that's- uh, so, what, uh, so I, uh, let me try to understand what you're saying, Arun. So you were uh, quotienting out by this, uh, by the relation. Is that is that what you're doing? Yes. So x1, x2, xn is equal to one. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, we do that also in the Daha. So. So we put an so, extra relation into the Daha, which is this one. Mm -hmm. And then instead of this, you just quotient out by this, and then you will still get an action. And this is still valid yours, this formula. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of questions. I'm still a little confused. So, uh, so coming back to my first question, uh, so now we, in uh, at this level, in this polynomial representation, we think of Q and T at the same level, right? They are both parameters. Yes. Right? And the central uh, business has gone. So, but somehow, when you were at the group level, the Q had priority. It was, whereas T was not there at all. 
right? Yes. Okay. So the other thing I'm confused about is, so uh, we, we ha you had this bunch of alternate presentations. Yes. Of the, of the dart. And uh, therefore the, of the daha. Huh. And uh, in one of them, the excise were operators. Excise right? were generators, yeah. Uh, generators, sorry. Yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, and so were the YIs, right? So, no, so, uh, no. There was one presentation with the excise and another presentation with the YIs. Yeah. So that's yeah. what is confusing me now. Because uh, now for you, this X, you are going to act on these XIs in the Yeah, so, so see, um, so can I write, I'll write that. Okay, let me, so we have this C. Right, this was H and tilde tensor one. This are the Yeah. So the XIs, uh, um, the uh, XIs, and the, the, the other thing is also that these, this, uh, this uh, has a basis, has a C basis consisting of. X to the mu, mu is in Z. Right, so that's why we that justifies this notation. Yeah. So I can talk about any element of the daha acting on any element on any of these basis vectors. Mm -hmm. Right. So I take any element of the daha. So what should I call it? Uh, a. So the A is an element in the bar. Right? Mm -hmm. So it could be Xi, it could be Yi, it could be G, G chat, Ti, etc. Okay. No, but. Uh... So is it like a regular representation? It's sort of acting on itself? No, 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 because I have killed, see, it's not a regular representation because I have, uh, see, this is a tensor, see, I'm, I'm here, I'm killing, uh, see, this subalgebra, this is over the subalgebra, this is subalgebra. Yeah. This subalgebra was generated by T1, Tn minus one and g. Hmm. Okay, and so I'm, I'm sort of killing these. See, it's like uh, if I may, in fact, it is an. In, you can think of it as an induced representation. So when you when you induce from a subgroup, right? See, you, you induce a trivial representation or a one-dimensional representation from a subgroup. Right. Well, one way of doing it is like you will write C G C H B. So if if V is a if I have a subgroup H and a module V for it, mm -hmm. then I build a module for the bigger group or bigger group ring by doing this. Yeah. So this is not quite the regular representation because this would be the regular representation. Uh -huh. But I'm tensoring on this side with a, so th this would be, I mean, depends on uh, whether you take this viewpoint or the dual. So some, you know, in some books, this is called the induction from H to G of V, yeah. right? So this is uh, the module Induction in general, if you have an algebra A and a subalgebra B, hmm. right, and a module for this subalgebra M, hmm. you can do you can do this. So this is a module for 
this is an emo can i make a remark sure uh, maybe it may help to first say that there basically there's a lemma underlying all of this which is that every basis vector or every element of the daha can be written as a word or, or in the spanning as words where first x to the mu occur on the left and then g g check and ti occur on the right this is lemma 1 that's what that's you do by taking things past each other right that's what right. you do right the, 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 this this hn is spanned by words like x to the mu g to something yeah that. so so uh that thing. so there was this Algebra. i'm i'm just writing trying to write down yeah. what apurva is just saying yeah. so this that that subalgebra so this um g q right this was a set of generators that's right that's this q as well yeah and then Q is central, so it goes through. So Q X I is X I Q, no problem. Or X me, let me write X me. No problem because Q is central. But for the others, G X me, we wrote down something something, maybe with, uh, with even with the Q power yeah. minus something, yeah. and then then G on this side. That's right. This was. Okay, maybe I'll I'll write it out again. Okay. So this was q power minus. I, I would say take the q on the left, right as well. Take everything. Yeah. On the, okay. On the right. Keep the keep the q on the right as well. Yeah. Okay. So this is x one to the mu. Oh, sorry, x two to the mu one. X to the sigma of mu is fine. Sigma is a cycle. Yeah. Okay. Correct. I don't uh, want to write so much. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I should have uh, x n to the mu and minus one. X one to the mu n, okay, and then, and then I can write q minus n. Oh, sorry, mu n g, etc. Right. etc. Right. So similarly, you can do this for every equation. Right. As a consequence, this hekya daha is actually you can write it as a vector space maybe or whatever. Whatever it is spanned by the x monomials on the left and the rest of the things on the right. So that's right. what. Yeah, right, like right, right. Exactly. This is point one. Now, point two is now. Let us consider the action of this daha on this module H. Okay. So, when you take such a monomial and act on x to the mu tensor one, then because of the what the lemma one just said, the monomial keep the x to the mu on the left. That's fine. Now, take the remaining words in the g and the q and the t's. Act on the x to the mu and shift it so that it goes past it by lemma one by the previous this observation. Therefore, you are reduced to Again, now something where the x is on the left and the rest is on the right, and the rest acts on that one-dimensional module in the way that you specify. Thanks, Apurva. Uh, so, like, if you want to act by g g times x to the mu on x to the new tensor one, then you would just say that is all this right-hand side. Uh, sorry, uh, then that would be g acting g x to the new x to the new, right? A mu plus mu that is, and then you would do all this thing. You would get a g, and then g tensor one, and then g x by whatever it does. And the Inside one. by identity. Yeah. By identity. So I hope that was correct. That yeah, was yeah, correct. yeah. I agree with that. So this is like uh, having a Bernstein presentation for the Daha as well, right? Yes, this is the analog of the Bernstein. Yes. Uh, Uh, I mean, more correctly, I should have said that uh, for the dart, this x one. So the we had a definition and then a presentation, with, uh, alternate presentation, and the alternate presentation is like the one step. Yes. So we have somehow forgotten the ti's and the and the g. Uh, what happened to the G check by the way? Uh, G check is include G check. See, there is no G check here. G check is embedded in here. So X one is G check T n minus one inverse T one inverse. So you can write uh -huh. G check okay, okay. as uh, X one and then T one. Okay. T one. That is there. I see. So and somehow the McDonald. The non-symmetric McDonald polynomial is going to occur when you interpret the yi's in this presentation. I mean, you had this presentation involving the ti's and the yi's as well. 
Yes, see, I'm, I'm doing two things. I'm thinking of, see, I'm to think of this as, a, see, I'm using both presentations. See, I'm, that's what I start to write here. So in, in writing, in thinking of this as, uh, you know, as saying that it is a C basis consisting of X mu, mu in ZN, I'm thinking of this presentation for H and tilde. Hmm. But there are any element of H and tilde is an honest uh, operator on this model. Yeah. So I can use the YIs, for example. Right. And so the question is, what happens when I act the YIs? And they commute with each other, right? Mm -hmm. they, that is, that they even commute in the dart. So, and they are semi-simple operators. So, uh, it, it makes sense to ask for common eigenvectors for them, and the emus are the common eigenvectors for the action of the yis on this one. Okay. And sorry, so just to clarify, the fact that you can uh, write uh, this uh, representation at all it, uh, follows from the fact that uh, xis also commute. Right. I mean, in in the yeah. So other, let's, uh, uh, let's see. Presentation. You had that the X i is also mutually commute, right? And X i is mutually commute. Yes, that's part of this. You know, when I present them with these generators, yeah. Uh, X i is commute among themselves. Yes. No, no, no. I meant the fact that you can you think of C of X plus minus. Hmm. I mean you're acting on them i mean this uh, you don't care about the order so any 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 monomial yes, in the exercise yeah, is yeah, defined yeah, in yeah, yeah. Meaning. Okay. so that that is also inbuilt in this uh, i mean Correct. that's the reason why you could uh, build the representation this way right so that's that's why i can write this x mu rather cavalierly yeah yeah in the even in the uh, even in the uh, dot even in B and tilde. Hmm. Okay, right, this, this, this will mean X1 to the mu1, Xn to the mu n, and the order does not matter. Right. And okay. similarly for the Ys. Okay, yeah, thanks. This was all very helpful. Yeah, sorry if I asked. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm as, you know, like I said, my experience is just uh, of a few days, that's why. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. So in uh, in this, uh, when we did double affine braid group and then we did, uh, so, uh, then we uh, did that uh, affine Heckel algebra and stuff. There we had a Q0, which was uh, uh, a eth root of Q, where e is, the, e is equal to n for GLN and it is order of P mod Q. Uh -huh. So I, I mean, I'm just wondering if that, uh, why are we not seeing such a thing here? No, no, for GLN, E is equal to one. For SLN, E is equal to N. Oh, okay. Right, 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 yeah. I think I understand, yeah. Yeah, I have not, um, like I said, I have not reconciled what we are doing it with what uh, Radhika did. So, uh, thanks, Aritra. If uh, uh, you could, uh, I, I plan to write out a few exercises where I, that reconciliation will be done. Any more questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Raghavan. Thank you. Uh, um, I'll send these notes right away and then for what they're worth. 
and I'll send you a set of uh, exercises later in the day. Yeah, sure. Maybe by.